Let's go. preserving some of the produce coming from my garden. I have a lot of tomatoes which needs to be used, a bunch of huge cucumbers <laughs> and then we have some onions here and lime which are not from my garden but they will be a part of this preservation project. Um, I also have a few cucumbers over here, which I will preserve in a different way, but I'm going to start with doing a big batch of pico de gallo, which is my absolute favorite thing in the world. I love this salsa. It's tangy, it's crispy, it's fresh. I just love it so much. So I have an abundance of <laughs> tomatoes from my own garden and cucumber from my own garden. I also have cilantro but they have gone to to seed so i bought this from the store which is fine so i'm going to make it in this bowl just a huge batch and i will uh, use some of it in the tacos tonight and then i will keep some of it in jars uh, that i'll put in the fridge because they will last for about two months uh, and we go through it pretty quickly because we love it so much so I'm going to start by, it's already rinsed, so I'm going to chop it up and just put this, put it in the bowl. So I will start with the onions and this needs to be used up first, so yeah, let's go. And I'm going to do quite a rough chop because I like uh, my pico de gallo pretty chunky and crispy. I'm gonna get a bowl to put all of the peels and everything to put in the compost. I'm not going to have as much onion in uh, the pico de gallo because if I'm going to preserve it in the fridge, I can only imagine that the um, onion is going to taste more and more of onion. You know, it's, it's a pretty strong onion. So we eat tacos pretty frequently here. Uh, in Sweden, we actually have a typical uh, like Friday taco thing. It's like a tradition. But our tacos is not really Mexican tacos. It's um, pretty basic <laughs> as everything else in Sweden. But I would like to know how you eat your tacos and if you do it frequently, what is your favorite toppings and yeah, how do you make your tacos? I'm very curious and I would love to get, get some inspiration. I, I try to mix it up, but we usually go for the same thing, which is uh, ground beef uh, seasoned with taco seasoning. And then we have just a regular tomato salsa, guacamole, um, salad, tomato cucumbers, you know, the, the usual vegetables and a bit of onion. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, sometimes I do like a halloumi taco or fish taco. But tonight I'm actually doing something quite different. Just made it up. It was um, uh, grounded chorizo on sale. So I bought it and I thought I was going to do a more like Mexican style taco with this pico de gallo and like a fresh guacamole. That was all the onions. Oh. They were really strong, these onions. I'm going to do a rough chop on this cucumber as well. I don't like my salsas or my pico de gallos to be runny or watery. They like them to be, yeah, as I said, quite like 
fresh and crispy. So keeping everything quite chunky, I, in my opinion, it, uh, it also kind of thickens the salsa. So anyway, welcome to my, my kitchen. <laughs> we are newly moved into this house. We, we built this house. We bought the property from the market and then we uh, built it with a, a house um, building company uh, which makes these like standard I don't know what it's called in English, but when building a house, at least here in Sweden, which is all the experience that I have, uh, you can you can like pick a house and be like, yes, I want this one. Uh, you can also do architectural design houses, which you design completely from scratch, but um, that's quite expensive. It takes a lot of time. And we got this house built in about six months, which is absolutely crazy. Um, but anyways, this uh, kitchen and, and the layout and everything is already pre-made pre or pre-decided. We just liked it, so we picked this house. Um, but I liked, <laughs> I actually envisioned uh, these type of videos because I, I really wanted to do YouTube back then. I mean for a couple of years now and this is what I imagined you know standing on this island with this open space and all the light coming through the windows uh, in front of me uh, and this uh, color of the cabinets is like a muted, muted green like a blue green almost and we bargained to get this uh, color because it wasn't included in the, the standards of the house you couldn't really choose this color of the cabinet so we paid extra and we got it and I'm so happy I love it so much I'm going to remove this um, blossom end and I've come to realize two things <laughs> I did not put the lights on so it, it might have been a bit dark I don't know and also I think the frame has been a little bit crooked this whole time. But I have never filmed this way. I mean, talking and filming in the kitchen like this. So it's the, it's the first and yeah, I'm learning as I go. I, I really appreciate you being here and um, I'm being patient. These tomatoes are so <laughs> juicy because it's been raining a lot here. So they collected a lot of water. They still taste good though. I don't feel like they have been diluted in any way. I also hate this cutting board. <laughs> it has rounded edges so everything just slips off all the time making a mess. to add two limes so now I'm going to add a bit of salt and mix everything together and I'm going to be careful with the salt because we are going to eat this salsa with with the tortilla chips or with tacos, so I don't want to over salt it. Let's do a taste test to see if it needs anything else. The onion is <laughs> very strong. I'm going to add... I don't have any more lime, but I'm going to add lemon. A little bit of sugar, actually. Um, because I'm going to preserve them in the fridge. 
and I'm also going to add more salt and maybe a little bit of pepper. Black pepper. And if I want more spice, or it's not spicy at all, but if I do want spice, I will add it separately, I think, um, to the different servings, because if I'm making something that is already quite spicy, I don't want more spice. So I feel like this is a pretty neutral base that I can adjust to whatever we're eating it with. And also it's gonna evolve a lot more flavor as it sits. Yeah. That's super fresh. I have two sterilized clean jars right here. I just boiled them in some water. And I am going to fill these up because I think this is going to be one serving for us. So I'm gonna do two servings and then I think it's gonna be enough for tonight uh, left. The salsa managed to be quite runny even though I didn't want it to. And I think that the tomatoes were just so uh, watery but I think that's in afterthought quite good because I'm going to pour that liquid into the jars to preserve them these will not be sealed in any way but it doesn't hurt to remove any residue. I'm gonna try to put it on quite hard. These are these like easy open lids. And there we go. This is the salsa that uh, was left that we are going to use for tonight's tacos and to snack on during the weekend. And here is the two cans that I'm going to preserve in the fridge. While my other two cans are boiling away here on the side, I'm going to start the brine for the next thing. So I'm going to add two deciliters of water and four tablespoons of vinegar essence. I'm going to do some salt and this is coarse salt. And <laughs> it's the only salt I have that doesn't contain iodine. So it's hard to tell how much this is. I'm just gonna do a two pinches. Four tablespoons of sugar. Oops. <laughs> okay. Four. Some white pepper. And while this heats up, I'm going to cut all of the cucumbers. And these are also <laughs> recycled, or I'm reusing these jars. So I'm gonna pack them in here. And I will put the parsley in here. It's called press gurka, like pressed um, cucumbers. And then I'm going to pour the brine while it's still quite hot. Since I have so many cucumbers, I needed to find another type of pickled cucumber recipe. And there are two other recipes that are quite 
usual in Sweden and one of them is like a salty regular pickle and the other one is a more sweet and tangy pickle which you can eat with like a meat stew or on a toast with liver pate <laughs> and <laughs> that is also a common thing in Sweden that we eat. And for both of these, the brine is the same, but I will separate them and do one of them with more salt. They both use mustard seeds, onions, and also dill flower heads. Carrots are one of these crops that you get all at once, much like potatoes. We have used a lot for fresh eating and I store them in a jug of water in the fridge and they'll last me for weeks. But at this point I had to use them. I tried three different pickled variations, one with hot peppers, bell peppers and coriander seeds all from the garden together with garlic. The second one is with cucumber and dill seeds from the garden, along with mustard seeds and onions. I didn't get footage of the third, but it has fennel, dill and fennel seeds and onion. You could use any of the brine recipes from this video or your own, but it's easy to remember 1 to 3 ratio. One part vinegar, two parts sugar, and three parts water. And sometimes I'll add a bit of salt as well. I really hope that you've enjoyed this type of video. These are some of the things that I have been preserving during the harvest season. A lot of it we've already eaten, a lot of it's in the freezer. And I feel really happy with what we've preserved so far. I know I can do so much more, but we've basically eaten most of it fresh. Uh, I do cook a lot and I love vegetables, so a lot of the things I do are vegetarian. And for example, I, yesterday I made a shakshuka using almost all of our tomatoes, all of our, our bell peppers. You can do so much with vegetables, they're so versatile. There are a few other recipes that I'm going to uh, experiment when my chilies are uh, ripe. 
But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and please subscribe for more canning, preserving and cooking videos with whatever is in my garden.